for a little test cruise. Welcome to Saving Vessel Seeker. This week's job is to take the wiggle out of our transfer case. And this beefy bracket, which connects to three of my cross member frames, replaces this little wobbly thing. So that's part of it. Up here it was kind of doing this twisting thing, about an eighth inch of a movement. So that was way too much. And the other part of the problem is it was loosening up the bolts that we mounted with down here at the bottom. This is a big angle iron frame that we welded into the frames of the boat. And then we built this bracket that bolts into the transfer case here. But these bolts keep loosening up and they are in holes that go all the way through into the case. And when they loosen up, they start oozing oil out too. We've actually had a fall away out. So we're going to take the transfer case out now that I got the top brace done and just weld that bracket to the transfer case because that bracket is bolted into the frames here on the floor so we still can remove it we just will make it part of the transfer case probably gonna have to take all this gear and stuff out too because this is cast iron we're gonna have to preheat this so I'll be back when I got this beast back out screw this to the bottom of that so it'll catch the center right out. yeah that'll work we're trying to keep our drawers from sliding out when we heal 20 degrees. A little wood latch is just not enough, so we're adding a little metal to it. Sunrise looks just like the sunset did. Right, comes off there again. I think it's going to be in pieces. Bolts went in first and they got welded in. And that preheated the casting at 200, so I didn't even bother with the torch. For some welding, it was well over 300. It's 360, 350 right now. And I don't even know that this is really a cast iron because when I grind it, it sparks just like steel. It doesn't have that, you know, that secondary spark thing that cast iron does, so. I'm not sure, but it sure welded fine. I think our troubles are over, at least with it coming loose. And it just got a little smoky in here. This morning's project is clean up, put it back together, and paint it day. While Ron is installing a uh, new plug outlet for the pump down here. So we switched to a 110 volt pump, which really is nice. I tell you what, bigger, more powerful, I like it. It's the pump that, uh, that throws out the water from the sink in the shower. How's it going, boss? All right, it's a little slow. Well, slow's all right. We're not in any rush. Just give me a light bulb. Put it in your teeth? Yep. All right. I'll stick my hand up. I'll be the new statue of Mr. Liberty. <laughs> all right, she's all back together and ready for some more testing. The oil's in, level's right. I changed that hose down there. I put a uh, ball valve in instead. That way it lets them level out a little more faster. I wouldn't use the needle valve, so yeah. And I'm not gonna put my air compressor over here, so I brought the drain out this direction too, so it has more room. So, you know, always make a few tweaks. Never know. Get better every time. Forward! Looking really good. Yeah, I put a camera down there so I can watch that oil level, and see the vibration, and uh, being lazy, I didn't want to go up down that ladder 40 times again today. Okay, well, I'm, I'm high there. I'm going to move that sight glass. It just doesn't make sense that it's full on both ends. I loosen this up. Now it pours oil out where the indicator was too. So yeah, there's something about the bearing in here that keeps the indicator wrong over there. So we'll move it to this side. Yeah, nice now. Maybe that was the whole problem. Okay, do another test run tomorrow. Wow, there's the sight. What a gorgeous evening. Okay, we got some tourists coming by, but man, I look down the water. Oh, he's gone. A huge fish down there. I mean, he was like three and a half feet long. Oh, no, there he is. He's right beside the rudder. See that shadow? That is not part of my boat. That is a fish. That is a big fish. Goodness. Wonder what he is. 
The oil's right down at the bottom. That's probably fine there, but I can go down and tweak those uh, needle valves. We're getting closer each time I do that. Well, that's damn easy. You just put a waypoint out there and tell it to navigate, and it steers right to your point. It overshot seriously, but I think that's a tuning issue. I gotta get in there and tweak it some. Unless it's like a PDI and it learns on its own. I haven't read that part of the manual. Remember that? I don't read manuals. <laughs> Yeah, I do need to turn it down. It's a little sensitive. It's trying to hold that line just spot on. You know, I really wouldn't care if it's that far off. The blue line is the uh, heading of the boat, and that right there is our waypoint, so it's a little off. 23 degrees on the rotor. And look at her swing. Man, I love my rudder system. I love my autopilot. I used to have some things you build that work. Even if it's a birdhouse, guys, you gotta get on it. Some throttle and she's still holding steady as a rock. The oil level's good, but look, it's got air going up it too, so it's making bubbles. Gotta be throwing a lot of oil around in there. Temperatures come up to about 130, 135 maybe. Well, we've been running a little under two hours, I think at five and a half knots, so I think it's good. Well, no, it went all cockeyed again. It didn't like 1600 RPM. It drained the oil out of the transfer case, put it all in the hundy shed. Shit. Well, gonna be looking for some other solution. Maybe a, maybe a float valve. It's not a lot of pressure. We'll, look, we'll think about that. I wonder why it decides to change its mind all of a sudden. First air bubbles and then drained it. Well, you know what? I was messing with the pitch. Not a lot, just a little bit, but that's the change. I didn't like when I uh, divert the oil for actual use in the undershed. So that means that I could get it set up for cruising and just leave the pitch alone for a while. See, there's the oil coming back now. So now we have a oil distribution problem. I think the mount problem is fine, but the oil distribution problem is the next one to solve. If I leave the pitch alone, I think it's, it's okay, but I'm not gonna leave the pitch alone. I can close the needle valve down all the way to the understead and it's got to be sending oil up to the transfer case. That needle valve is all the way open, but yet it's not catching up with how much oil is being sucked out of it. I had a needle valve down below to stop that from happening. Oh, I can close the shutoff valve. Shit, yeah, let me go try to do that. Okay, we're at idle. That ball valve down there is closed, so it's not sucking any oil out of the transfer case. Look at that oil level. It's real low still, so it's not being fed over from the bypass. Of course, the engine's just idling. The power steering pump's not doing much. Here's an interesting sight. That ship over there has a big-ass crane on it, and those little pyramid-looking things on the back there, those are artificial reefs. So that's cool. Yeah, you know, it makes me wonder if we're not passing up a lot of opportunities to make artificial reefs just because, you know, there's some pollutants on what we could throw in. You know, take for example an old pickup truck or a car. You know, take the battery out, empty the oil out, and toss it in. You're going to do a little environmental damage because there's going to be something that comes off of it that kills something. But overall, you know, for the next 15, 20 years and the reef that builds up on top of it, I think the net gain is probably worth it. Be an interesting project, wouldn't it? I redid it again. I think we're on to something here. Let me let you hear me. I made this long video last night describing the problem with getting the fluid to balance out here, and uh, with my ideas for adding a uh, well, a race car, or a circulation pump, and uh, maybe a valve or two more. And uh, then you know what? I posted that up, and somebody. <laughs> Got it faster than I did because they were commenting at the same time I did with a new idea. That was Philip on the Facebook group and his idea was to use a pressure relief valve but I don't have one around but I did of course have a needle valve. I've actually taken more parts out than I put in on this time. So now what it does, you know, pressure comes in on this line, it hits a T, it goes up and we can use a needle valve to control how much goes over to the transfer case. That means we have a consistent 
not pressure consistent, but at least there's always oil available to send there. Now I might put a float switch over here on the transfer case and a solenoid valve here so that when that needs fluid, it would open that solenoid valve up and send some over to share. That's a whole lot cheaper than the uh, uh, oil uh, circulation pump. And I actually have the solenoid on board the boat. So this thing, you just open it that much and with the pressure that's made off the uh, power steering pump, it feeds it over. Now the rest of the oil just does its normal thing. It goes on down and hits a pressure relief valve that sends a bypass over, just dumps it into the top, or it sends it through that bottom pipe there into the, the coupler over the Wunderstedt. So, yeah, I, at least we can be sure of getting oil up here. Now we're just gonna be, uh, see what it does. Another test run. Fuel on, engine on. Well, so far she's doing really good. Man, is there a lot of boats out today. I think the Blue Angels are doing something. It's just a non-stop stream of motorboats coming out of there. Big Lagoon Yacht Club is holding sailing classes today. I think that's Pete coming out to say hello. All right, George, I think we got it. I tweaked the uh, needle valve a little bit. It certainly makes a difference, but I can mess with the, uh, the pitch and the throttle, and it doesn't seem to have more than a quarter inch effect on it. So, ha, yeah, I like that. Okay. Yeah, the oil's perfect and the mount is in great shape and very little vibration. I think we got it. Well, that is just fantastic. And, you know, big thanks to uh, Dallas at Big D 4x4 in Tulsa, Oklahoma for donating the transfer case. And uh, Andrew McDonald, see him on YouTube. It's andrew.mcdonald.com on YouTube and uh, he's got a fantastic project going on but it was his idea to use the transfer case I was just going to cut down the diameter of the propeller to get the shaft uh, speed up to, and also the engine RPM up to a better range Andy came up with this transfer case idea and you know before that there's the automatic transmission and uh, for you guys out there that drive dirt track cars is that hey put a torque converter eliminator in that thing it's like I didn't even know they existed, but a torque converter eliminator got rid of the torque converter. The heat problems went away, the slip went away, so we had you know a higher speed RPM off the drive shaft. Now we've slowed it back down. We have a lot of torque in the right speed of the shaft for the propeller size we got, and it's working out beautifully. You know, who didn't know that you could get a school bus engine uh, with the automatic transmission behind it and a torque converter case out of a four-wheel drive system and put it all together and make a functional system and thanks to Philip for the last idea about the plumbing on the uh, the oil transfer now we've got you know oil that's not only cool but filtered in both units uh, this is fantastic it really is and you know I I'm listening to a book right now it's called deep survival and in it there's a quote uh, from a Buddhist guy uh, Sunryu Suzuki and it says in the beginner's mind there are many possibilities and the experts mind there are few and that just sums it up you know I've had experts and you know I listen to the experts they're you know they're not worthless but you know a lot of times they're they have their reputation to protect so they're gonna tell you oh you need to buy a, a, a twin disk uh, system for that or a V drive so, I don't have money for that stuff. It ain't cheap, you know, but this stuff, this stuff is cheap. And so we've gotten by with creativity. And that's what it's all about, all these possibilities, you know. So go out to your shop, spend some time, and let those creative juices flow, you know. And you know, listen to the experts, but don't worry too much about what they said. You know, remember the Wright brothers were told that it would never work by the experts, okay? So, yeah, they, they, they listen to them, but... Don't pay too much heed. If you've got a creative idea, go out there and explore with it. You'll learn and you'll get new ideas from that. And that is really where I mean, life is lived well. Uh, otherwise, you're just following what somebody else tells you to do. Which is good if you want to be a lemming. Don't be a lemming. Be creative. Senryu Yu Suzuki. In the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities. In the expert's mind, there are few. When you get that thing done, send us a picture of it. We want to see it. What'd you make today? <laughs>